Thank you for having me here. Um, my journey, I think of it as a very unique journey. Um, I did not go to school for cybersecurity. I initially went to school for criminal justice and I wanted to be a lawyer. And then um, I ended up graduating with a bachelor's in criminal justice and child development. And I thought I wanted to go into social work. Um, and I ended up going to grad school for social work. And two months within the program, I knew that, you know, social work wasn't the field for me. Um, and I've always had a love for technology. So I wanted to try to figure out, you know, how can I combine my love of the law and my love of technology together? Uh, wasn't completely successful with that, but um, my aunt has been in the IT field for over 20 years and she encouraged me to look into cybersecurity. And um, I did some Googling, I did some research and I ended up enrolling in the Master of Science program at University of Detroit Mercy. And I completed my master's degree, degree there um, in cybersecurity. Um, while I was in grad school, I um, got an internship at Learning Care Group. Um, and I was already working there as a, um, as a teacher, but I ended up getting promoted um, to the headquarters and I got a cybersecurity internship. I stayed there for about six months um, getting some experience. And then I moved over to Ally Financial. Um, and there I went from a IT risk analyst to a business line risk manager. And I currently sit on the technology risk and resiliency team. And I manage the risk for the infrastructure of Ally's company. And um, I am currently certified in, um, I have the CHFI as well as the CEH. And I'm also studying for the uh, the C risk as well. So it's been a very interesting journey. It's only been three years, and I'm looking forward to um, continuing to make my digital footprint in the cybersecurity field. Um, I'm not currently in a digital forensic investigator role, but I, I would say the most challenging thing is um, really understanding what you're responsible to do in that role and making sure um, companies understand the importance of that role. Um, I was interested in that role because at one point I was going for a master's, another master's in cybercrime. And uh, I mean, especially with everyone working virtually, cybercrime is at an all time high right now. And I feel like, um, you know, digital forensic investigators can't, they have a, they have a better understanding. They, they, for me, I've always thought of them as people who can um, be IT professionals and law professionals at the same time compared to someone who's like a certified ethical hacker. Yeah, they're thinking like a hacker, but they're really thinking from a technology perspective compared to a digital forensic investigator. You know, they're giving both, you know, they're bridging that gap between law enforcement and IT professionals, which is something I think that is very important. So I think the challenging part is having most companies and just, you know, our field in general and just other fields, understanding the importance of this role and that not only do government agencies need, need uh, digital forensic investigators, but all companies should be invest, you know, investing in having digital uh, forensic investigator teams. Um, it's benefited me in many great ways. Um, this was like a huge accomplishment for me because this is something that I always wanted and it took me two years to finally get the courage up to actually take the exam and, you know, really study. Cause I was, you know, my previous company kind of discouraged me from doing that. Cause they didn't think that it would benefit me. But with me being at my new company, they were really all for me, um, evolved in my career and enhancing my technical skills. And in that moment, when I was, um, you know, going through, I, I went through some training. So I had a boot camp, Um, and then I took, you know, I reached out to different resources and um, actually talk to someone who were, who was in this role, kind of understanding like a day in the life of a, a digital forensic investigator. So that kind of helped me understand like, okay, this is something that I want to do in my career. And it really helped me from networking. So I, I did the boot camp and I studied, 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 studied. Um, every day I dedicated at least two to three hours um, to studying, making sure that I understood it. Um, I even started looking at TV shows, trying to see, you know, the things that I'm learning from the CHFI, how does it apply to real life? How does it apply to different companies? How does it apply to this movie or this show? Um, I'm a visual learner, so really trying to 
making just really trying to make sure that I understand what I'm, you know, what I'm looking at, the information I'm looking at, because people can just look at the CHFI and say, oh, it's oh, all, you know, it's just, uh, you know, you're on a computer all the time investigating. And it's way more than that. It's a lot of more, it's a lot more processes and a lot of steps. And you have to have research skills in order to do this type of role. Um, but I think that overall it has benefited. Um, it has increased my technical skills. It has, um, you know, enhanced my research skills. It strengthened my investigative skills and it just made me look more deep into a problem, um, trying to solve it, really enhancing the problem solving skills as well, instead of just looking at it at a high level. Um, my experience, it was it was tough. It was I was extremely nervous. Um, again, this is something I have been trying to do for two years. So I was just extremely nervous, um, but I had an excellent trainer. Um, I had an amazing trainer who made us feel really comfortable and really gave us real life examples as we were going through the content to make sure that we are understanding and, you know, really putting ourselves, really putting our CHFI, uh, CHFI hat on to make sure that we're understanding the information that we're looking at. Um, again, I put a lot of work into studying. Um, I had training for um, a few, uh, I had training for five days. Each day I spent an additional two to three hours um, studying. And then after my training was over, I took an additional, um, I took additional time and I dedicated at least three to four hours to studying uh, each day, you know, making sure that I'm doing my labs, making sure that I'm learning the tools. So I definitely put a lot of effort into it. Um, it was tough, but I, a lot of the work that I put into it, um, when I saw that I passed, I realized that I did the right thing and um, you know, my studying habits were appropriate. And I was just excited that, you know, my great work was being recognized by it because I found out that I passed. I like that the CHFI is, it's fun and it's new. It's not something that everybody immediately go, goes towards. Everyone goes towards, you know, the CEH or they go to, towards a security plus or you know, something with AWS or Microsoft, but nobody immediately goes for CHFI. So I love that it was it was new and it's, it's a fresh and up and coming idea that everybody is getting used to. Um, I love that the new tools that were introduced. I love that, um, you know, you have the, you know, with being a CHFI, being in that role, you have the ability to be, to work anywhere you want because everyone is, is gonna need this type of role, especially with cybercrime being at an all time high. And as we know, hackers, they're looking for a new way to receive information and steal information every day. So having this type of role, um, you know, it creates flexibility. So, you know, the new tools um, that we see, the flexibility, and then just the fact that it's fresh and fun and creative. I would say with vulnerability management would be the biggest, would be my biggest example um, because I manage the risk for the infrastructure <clears throat> of our company. And um, the infrastructure is a very sensitive area because without our infrastructure, we wouldn't be able to <clears throat> continue our work day. So anytime that I see, you know, vulnerabilities, um, we have worked tremendously um, with our vulnerability management and I'm able to take the skills that I've learned from the CHFI and actually sit down my application owners and educate them on what could happen with this particular vulnerability. What can someone do? And I broke it down and you know, I, they, I investigated the vulnerability. So I did research on the vulnerabilities and where are they in other companies and how are other companies handling them? Then I said, okay, you know, once we investigate, let's, let's do a little bit more research on the remediation. How is the remediation happening and what steps are we taking? And then after that, are we making sure that once we remediate, are we making sure that the environment that we just cleaned up is, is, is clean? Do we have any back doors or weaknesses that are still open after we remediate these vulnerabilities? And I think that just those skills, um, those investigative and research skills from the CHFI has really strengthened um, you know, me having a better technical understanding on vulnerability management and me being able to explain that to my application owners. 
I think that it is an important role. Um, like I mentioned prior, I think that we don't pay attention to this role enough. I think the problem that we experience in this field or just in society, IT professionals and law enforcement, there's a huge gap um, between those two professions. And in order for us to tackle cybercrime, we need something that brings those two together. And I think the CHFI does that. I think that it has, you, you should have a law enforcement background or you should have some type of love of the law or and, and then your love of technology and cybersecurity and put those together. Um, I'm extremely passionate about this type of stuff. I, 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 I wrote a um, thesis on cyber criminal profiling and I think that the CHFI role fits completely into that. So I think that we just need to make sure that, you know, as much as we, um, you know, promote the roles of being analysts and risk and governance and hackers and, um, you know, a CISO role and things like that, we should also be encouraging people to become a CHFI because those are the people that can, you know, in those roles, they can really help us. They can really help us bridge this gap. And although we'll never be, you know, always fully protected because cybersecurity and technology continues to change every day. We can get ahead with this role by promoting people to do this role more and get involved with this more. My advice, um, number one, take your time. Make sure that you wanna take this certification. Don't let anyone force you to take this certification. Make sure that you're passionate about this and this is what you wanna do. There is no rush when it comes to getting certifications. Take your time. Get your feet wet in the field. Get a little bit of experience. At least I encourage at least two to three years of experience. So that way, when you're sitting, you know, and taking this test and you're learning all of these different, um, you know, just everything about this exam, all of these ideas, all of these tools to make sure you have a better understanding, make sure that you have some work experience with this. Take your time. Don't psych yourself out. Cybersecurity is continuing to um, evolve every day. So, you know, be your own cheerleader. Cheer your own self on when it comes to this. Take your time, you know, reach out to people for networking, get involved with study groups. Um, you know, just really take your time on this and just be confident, be positive, and be willing to, you know, can you know, continue your education on this, even if you know this is not a certification, you know, you plan to work on eventually, you never know. You all, you want to be a well-rounded and you want to be a flexible person in this field. I started off thinking that I only wanted to do, um, you know, hacking and I find that I want to do everything. I want to do some of ethical hacking. I want to do some digital forensic investigative work. I want to do some risk and governance work. I may want to do some engineering work. It, it works out better when you are a well-rounded, flexible person and you understand every single aspect of cybersecurity, it will benefit you in the long run.